Again, welcome to the regular meeting of the City Council, May the 6th, 2019. If you will join me in the Pledge to the Flag, I'll ask Mayor Pro Tem Forrest Fleming to lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I'd like to call on the Reverend Elaine Hall with St. Matthew's United Methodist Church to lead us in an invocation. For the natural beauty that surrounds us, we give thanks. For the gifts of our neighbors, for their wisdom, compassion, knowledge, and connections, we give thanks for fortitude and resilience to face the challenges before us. We give thanks for grace to recognize our common humanity. We pray for patience to listen. Well, we pray for wisdom to recognize our common good and for the strength to pursue it, we pray. May each of us bring the best of who we are to the important work that we will do this night. Amen. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. I'd like to introduce counsel to my far right, Wendy Cato, City Council, Forrest Fleming, our Mayor Pro Tem, Louis Vina, our City Attorney. I'm Ronnie Thompson, your Mayor. Sally Sandy, City Manager, Sydney Simmons, City Council, Chris Hawkins, City Council, Kelly Russell, our Recording Secretary, and Becky Brinkley, our Interpreter for the Deaf Community. Our first order of business is a retire retiree resolution, and I think our first retiree is Scott Lanning. I'd like to read that resolution. Whereas Scott, Scott E. Lanning was employed as a public safety officer in the Public Safety Department on August 4th, 1997, completed field training and classified as Public Safety Officer 1 on December 13th, 1997, reassigned employment on March 3rd, 2002, rehired as a Public Safety Officer 1 on October 28th, reclassified as Public Safety Officer Special Assignment on July 1st, 2004, changed to Public Safety Officer on March 8th, 2014, promoted to Public Safety Officer Special Assignment Criminal Investigation Division in Burke County Narcotics Task Force on April the 4th, 2015. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. I'm gonna ask <coughs> Sidney Simmons if he will present this resolution. I'm not a big speaker. I just like to thank the city of Morgan, and uh, they were good to me and uh, giving me the opportunity to work. Thank you all. Scott, before you sit down, yeah. we have another motion. Uh, a motion to honor a, a retiring city employee, Chris. I think we have to declare a surplus, oh, we'll declare his a surplus. weapon surplus. Okay. And do we have a weapon here tonight, or have we, oh, we do? They're going to come up and present the weapon. Okay. Do I have a motion? I move to declare a surplus uh, weapon, a Glock uh, 23 General uh, 4 semi-automatic uh, pistol serial number XPH-031 uh, to be declared surplus, sold for one dollar and presented to retire to the retired public safety uh, officer Lanning. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Chief. 
Scott is more than just an employee. He's more than just a public safety officer. For his community, he is a true leader, an advocate, and a friend, and, and someone that's going to be sorely missed. And I really don't know how you replace somebody like Scott. But Scott, on behalf of public safety, congratulations, and we appreciate all you've done, all you've done for us. Absolutely. <laughs> the dollar for the gun. We have another resolution honoring Martin Hollis, whereas Martin Hollis was employed as a meter reader in the electric department on June 6, 1981, and resigned employment on August 16, 1983, rehired as a meter reader in the electric department on April 9, 1990, transferred to the wastewater treatment operator one in the water resources department on March 2, 1992, promoted to senior wastewater treatment plant operator in the wastewater department on November 2nd, 2013. And whereas Martin Hollis has faithfully served the city of Morganton in the wastewater department has given of his time and efforts for the benefit of the city of citizens of Morganton for 31 years and three months. And whereas Martin G. Hollis retired from the city of Morganton as senior wastewater treatment plant operator in wastewater department on May 1st, 2019, and whereas the Morganton City Council wishes to officially recognize the contributions of Martin G. Hollis and express their appreciation for a job well done. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City of Morganton that the Mayor present this resolution to Martin G. Hollis, adopted the 6th day of May, 2019, Ronnie Thompson Mayor, Sally Sandy, City Clerk. Is Mr. Hollis here? I do not believe that so. That will be presented to him. He is now a certified floodplain manager. And Philip, congratulations, and with the rain we've had lately, a floodplain manager is probably what we need in Morganton. Thank you so much. Uh, we have an American Public Power Association Safety Award. That's going to go to the electric, the electric department. department. I'll ask Forrest Fleming if he'll present that award. Brooks Oops. is here. Yeah. There he is. For safe operating practices in 2018. always good to get an award and uh, especially one of this nature uh, congratulations to you and tell uh, all your men and your ladies that we appreciate so very much their uh, service to the city sure. thank you very much congratulations appreciate it so much I just want to thank most of all my my crews uh, because this award is theirs they're the ones who get out there and do the work and they follow the simple motto we created several years ago do it safe, do it right, do it one time, so you can go home to be with your families. I'm truly honored to be part of this award. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brooks. Thank you. Next, I would like to read a proclamation of thanks and appreciation to the town of Maiden, whereas on April 14, 2019, Morganton and surrounding areas were subjected to intense storms with lightning and very strong damaging winds. And whereas these storms brought down many trees, poles, etc., and caused widespread disruption of electric power throughout the city, and whereas the skilled staff of the city's electric department, despite a maximum effort, required outside assistance to promptly address all the damage and restore power to all customers, and whereas the town of Maiden is a public power community located in Catawba County, some 30 miles from Morganton, and whereas the electric department of the town of Maiden answered Morganton's call by promptly sending a crew of four experienced linemen who worked here on August, on April 14th and 15th, 2019. And whereas the team of, from Maiden provided invaluable assistance in addressing storm damage and restoring electric power in Morganton and devoted themselves in a selfless manner to such work as if it were their own community. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Morganton that on behalf of the citizens and residents of Morganton Gracious appreciation and thanks is hereby expressed to the town of Maiden for the good and hard work of Maiden's crew in hiring Morganton's electric department and helping Morganton's electric department repair damage and restore power after the violent storms on April 2019 and that a copy of this proclamation be presented to the town of Maiden and its electric department as evidence of our appreciation. Duly proclaim this the sixth day of May 2019. Do I have a motion to accept this proclamation? Make a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Mm -hmm. I will say that on that evening, um, the town of Drexel 
uh, called out and asked for our help because we are a go-to for them and we were not able to provide them any assistance because we were busy. We reached out to the town of Granite Falls and we've swapped help with them several times over the years and they were unable to provide help because they didn't have crews that were available and we are very grateful to Maiden. Um, actually, we received a call from them offering the help as we were calling around to try to get the help. So it's very positive to, to have partnerships like that in the power agency. Under upcoming events in Morganton, at Kama, the Sauce Boss will be Thursday, May 9th at 7 p.m. Downtown, we had a very successful TGIF this past Friday. It continues on May 10th with Grandma's Medicine, which is rock and roll. May 17th is called Rooted, which is Americana music. May 24th is Gotcha Groove, which is soul music. And a special event night at 6.30, story time for children and limited book giveaway sponsored by Smart Start and Adventure Book and Adventure Bound Books. On May 31st, Fox and Company, which is a dance group, and Farmer's Market on Wednesday on North Green Street and Saturdays on Beach Street. Do we have an update on the Municipal Power Agency number one? We do. We have Dan Brown with us tonight, um, who is a representative on the, both the Power Agency and the Electricity's Board of Directors. Dan, welcome. Hey, thank you, sir. As part of the City of Morganton's monthly power agency cost, money is normally put aside for capital projects and unexpected, unexpected <coughs> expenses at the power plant. This helps to offset any unforeseen expenses that would cause future rate increases. For the past three years, the power plant has run exceptionally well and extra working capital money has built up. So at our March rate committee meeting, the April board of commissioners meeting and the board of directors meetings, the following was approved. We voted to retire $75 million of debt. We voted to return $75 million to the 19 cities based upon each city's ownership share. For Morganton, that equals $4.824 million. The $4.8 million will be distributed in two ways. A credit against the wholesale bill, and that bill is the July bill due in August, with the remainder as a cash distribution. The rate committee the NACAMPA 1 Board and the Electricity's Board of Directors approved this approach to deal with this positive financial benefit so that the individual cities would have flexibility to do what they deem necessary to do. This approach allows the cities to consider funding planned capital projects, consider system improvements, and do additional tree trimming. I think you just had a storm where there's a few trees <laughs> and other such projects. In addition to that good news, there's also going to be a 2% wholesale rate reduction that begins July 1st. The electric wholesale rates are projected to remain at that level through at least 2022. So for budgeting purposes, that's also good news. The electric department is currently working on a retail rate decrease for Morganton's electric customers. The city staff is working with this information in hopes of a rate decrease for the customers in your upcoming budget year. All of that is good news, so if you have any questions about that. You can visit us any time with those kind of news. We appreciate it. <laughs> I thought, it's fun to appear in, in cases like this. Does members of council have any questions for Dan? Great news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your representation. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is the consent <coughs> agenda. I believe we have five items. Sally? Yes. I would ask that you consider these five items in a single motion unless somebody wants to remove an item and have it discussed separately. For those of you viewing at home, you have three sets of minutes, a regular meeting on April 1st, a special meeting on April 12th, and a closed session on April 12th. 
you have tax releases in the amount of $125.98, a budget amendment in the amount of $114 to receive a contribution from the Morganton Humanist Alliance to allow the city to purchase a tree that has been planted, to um, consider amendments to the Code of Ordinances, the section that deals with the governing board of the Morganton Housing Authority, um, to allow that group flexibility in membership and representation, would ask that you change that to say not less than seven members nor more than nine members. They are aware of this request. And then also the ordinance which would schedule our temporary street closures for city-sponsored events for 2019. Do any members of council wish to have anything taken off the consent agenda? If not, I have a motion to accept the consent agenda. Make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, under new business, we have a public hearing. First public hearing is to consider an amendment to the zoning ordinance to exclude drive through restaurants as a permitted use in the central business district. Public hearing is now open. I'll call on Philip Luckadoo to give us some kind of history and what's going on. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, drive through restaurants is, is a use that is not commonly, so what you have on uh, in front of you is just a, a um, uh, an amendment proposed to take that out of the list of permitted uses. Um, that was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their um, most recent meeting in uh, April and recommended unanimously to approve. And Philip, I just have a question. I know just because it says removing restaurants with drive through it's just, it's not removing restaurants from the central district. It's correct. just restaurants with drive through correct? Restaurants with no drive through is still a permitted use, yep. yes. Do we currently have drive through restaurants in the central business district? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you, Philip. Anything you like, else you'd like to add? No, sir. Would anyone in the audience like to address council concerning this uh, amendment to the zoning ordinance? Seeing no one approach the dais, public hearing is now closed. Um, Sally, would you like to add anything to that? I think that covers. Yep. Okay, what's the wish of council? Motion to adopt an ordinance amending table 3.1 of the City of Morganton zoning ordinance by removing restaurants with drive through from the list of permitted uses permitted in the Central Business District. Second. I have a, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next on our agenda is a public hearing and consideration of amendment to the zoning ordinance to add exceptions for overlay districts as a land use with condition which deals with electronic gambling. Call the public hearing to order. Philip. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, this one again is, a, is another uh, change to the ordinance, but it came to us kind of a, a little bit different way. Uh, as you know, this ordinance was written and, and adopted in 2014 and made effective 2015. And, and, and during that time and since these electronic gaming uh, you may have heard about them in the in the paper and in and, and other news media, but they are they have been an issue within the state and and not only within the state but but neighboring states as well. And and just as definition there, and I've got the full definition on here that our uh, zoning ordinance uh, spells it out. But it's essentially a business enterprise where persons util, utilize electronic machines. Uh, they conduct games of chance. <coughs> And they typically include uh, what you would call internet sweepstakes, internet sweepstakes cafe, video sweepstakes, cyber cafes, uh, where they have a finite pool of winners. Uh, it does not include uh, the, the North Carolina lottery, it, according to our definition. So they, they currently are allowed within the high intensity district, or the HID, uh, with no, uh, no conditions, no exceptions. And in the next slide, I'll get to it. Um, to show you the, the list of permitted uses, and, and I want to illustrate something to you. But, but before I do that, I uh, wanted to point out that this is an issue that, uh, that many of these games are, are illegal by state statute. And, and you, if the, 
district attorney's office has uh, contemplated how to pursue these these uh, types of businesses and whatnot. But our our official stance from our police department is stays, says that according to the North Carolina general statute, the machines are illegal. A first offense is a misdemeanor and five or more machines constitutes a felony. And that we are awaiting judicial decision, decisions in our district that will guide our enforcement actions. If and when charges are filed, all operating equipment may be seized. So that's kind of the, the, the legal um, position at present. The recommended uh, text amendment that we would have is that we would, and if you put a pointer up here on the on the screen, so in our zoning ordinance, and this is just a clip of the permitted uses table, and you see the, the permitted uses, and this is recreation and entertainment, and here is the electronic gaming operations. In this section where the pointer is now is where we have it's permitted, but it, it provides exceptions. So it's permitted, but it's not in, if, if it's listed as an exception, it's not in that district. And typically that's our overlay districts. And, and you see that there are no exceptions currently. Uh, it's permitted in the HID. And then in this section over here, conditions, may, it may be that a use is permitted, but it, only if it meets certain conditions. And, and you see that currently there are none. What this ordinance would do would it, is that it would add in this section would say not permitted in the corridor overlay, the river district overlay, or the neighborhood conservation overlay district. And then it would add section 3.4.6G, which is a condition, and that would read that no electronic gaming establishment shall be located within 500 feet of any residentially used property or any low intensity district or medium intensity district zoning district um, and or within a thousand feet of a property line of any school, park, church or similar place of religious service and or within one half mile of any other electronic gaming use. And that concludes my report. Okay. Uh, again, well, uh, maybe ba let me back up. Planning okay. Commission did review this in, at their April meeting and, and recommended unanimously seven to zero to, uh, to adopt this ordinance. Do any members present in the public would like to comment on this ordinance amendment? Seeing no one approach the desk, public hearing is closed. Uh, what's the wish of council? Motion to adopt an ordinance amending Table 3.1 of the City of Morganton Zoning Ordinance by adding Neighborhood Conservation Overlay, Corridor Overlay, and River District Overlay to the Overlay Exceptions column for electronic gaming operations by adding 3.4.6G to Conditions column for electronic gaming operations and by adding Subsection G to Section 3.4.6 to read as follows. No electronic gaming establishment shall be located within 500 feet of any residentially used property or any low intensity district or medium intensity district zoning district and or within 1,000 feet of a property line of any school, park, church, or similar place of religious service and or within one half mile of any other adult establishment. I have a motion to have a second. Second. I have a second. Any discussion among council? Man. Yes, I got, Council I got some comments. Okay. I believe since the uh, North Carolina general statute uh, states that these electronic gaming devices are illegal, I believe I would favor no gaming devices uh, within the city limits is what I feel would be a more appropriate uh, thing for us to do as opposed to granting uh, gaining devices uh, in certain situations or areas of the city. Thank you. Any members of any other comments from council? Would you like me to address Please. that? Yeah, if I may, um, members of council, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, first of all, minor point that there is actually a typo in the uh, proposed. Um, 
ordinance at the very end it says within one half mile of any other adult establishment should be electron any other gaming. electronic gaming establishment um, we'll correct that on the final form uh, to answer councilman Fleming's point the problem is that the operators of these machines and the owners of the businesses uh, usually allege that they are not illegal under the statute and uh, Indeed, that would certainly appear to be the case since they're openly operated in many places around the state. The, both the legislature and the courts have struggled for years now, nearly 10 years, to come up with a definition uh, and a way of addressing these places that would either make them illegal or control what they are. So far, that's been unsuccessful. Some are shut down. Some challenge their, the legality of their, or the illegality of their operation and have successfully challenged it. Um, and of course, electronic gaming could mean a lot of different things, and some of them may be legal. I don't know of any city that has successfully banned all kinds of electronic gaming. Uh, that to do so is definitely, it's not only inviting a lawsuit, I think I can safely say it would guarantee a lawsuit and these operators are exceedingly well-funded and very litigious. And I caution you about that. And yeah, so the cities of Hickory and Conover have discovered, although they've gotten a favorable ruling recently. Any other comments? Chris, you made a motion. I know we changed the wording of the last sentence. And Wendy, uh, you made the second. It's acceptable to, to go with that change, okay? Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, Any opposed? No. Motion passes four to one. Okay. Next, we have a public hearing in consideration of a request to rezone properties along Avery Avenue, Burtmont Avenue, Lenore Street, and Lenore Road corridors, uh, adding to the various the various base zoning districts. I'm going to call that public hearing to order. Ask Philip Luckadoo to give us some explanation, please. Mr. Mayor, members of council, if you will look at the material that you have under section 3.2.3, which, um, which talks about the corridor overlay, um, and then under 3.2.3.1, the intent, I have highlighted, and it shows up here uh, on the screen, that U U.S. Highway 64, Lenore Road, Lenore Street, Avery Avenue, and Berkmont Avenue, and then uh, also NC 181 uh, Green Street and Independence Boulevard, Jamestown Road, Cosby Road, all of these were supposed to have uh, the corridor overlay on them according to the actual text of the zoning ordinance. And, and the ones that are highlighted in yellow uh, presently do not have that, uh, that designation on the zoning map. And so this is an, uh, an effort to correct that. This is the area. Um, this is the area on that we're that we're talking about, and it, it stretches from where it crosses the the bypass uh, into downtown, and then along Burkmont from Union to Fleming. Uh, Philip, does it go all the way to the river? On the slide on the left, it looks like it goes almost to the river. Is that correct? This one, this is where. It, or is that the bypass? That, Just to that's, Sanford Drive. That's the Sanford Drive, and that and that's where it intersects with the River District. Okay. And then this is how it would look um, corrected with, with the corridor district, corridor overlay in place and the, um, uh, on, on uh, Lenore Road and, and Avery Avenue and then uh, and over here on Burkmont. You love to color the charts, don't you? <laughs> you love to. I love a good map. You love a good map. Um, and so this, I wanted to put this up here. If you remember, I read North Green Street and, and this, if you see the, the yellow or orange hatching that extends from Sanford, uh, or Fleming rather, to, into, um, to the Central Business District, that corridor district is in place. And, and it was as, as it was written in the text. It's just for whatever reason, those other, the other streets weren't included in that mapping. I really think it was an omission. Yes. Probably. Yep. Is the truth. Anything else, Philip? Uh, no, sir. I can go over if you would like the implications, kind of what it would what it would mean, what 
if you're in the corridor district. Well, people who live along those streets may, may be interested in how it will affect. And really for residential, there, there would be no change. Uh, this, this really affects commercial properties uh, and primarily in the high intensity district. But it would uh, bring about, if for any kind of new construction or certain triggers, if there's an expansion or if they're beyond a certain percentage or if there's a, a rebuilding beyond a certain percentage, uh, in addition to parking, that kind of thing, <clears throat> then it triggers building design standards. It may trigger uh, some landscaping and, and that type of thing. Um, and it also would, would affect uh, signage in those areas, but it, it really is an effort to, uh, to create uh, compatibility within the, within the character of, the, of that area that, or the area of the city that it's located. And, and particularly, uh, as we've discussed in other cases, these are the main corridors into town and, and to really bring about a, a, an aesthetic and an economic development benefit for, for those corridors and the city as a whole. And this has been before? It has been before the Planning Commission okay. uh, and at the same meeting and they voted 7-0 in favor. Thank you. Bill, if I've got uh, several of my neighbors here tonight, which we live on Avery Avenue, to a residential section they don't need, they got nothing to worry about, do they? No, sir. Yeah, the the only that time that to. anything comes into play for residential is, is if you are, and it really is for new subdivisions, and if you're trying to take advantage of some of the, the bonuses that we offer in our zoning ordinance, then you have some standards that you have to meet. But for existing residential, there is no effect. All right, to answer a question I've had about 10 people ask me, we've got a sign in front of the fire department. Uh huh. <laughs> Explain that, please. <laughs> if if it has to be if it has to be replaced, it would have to be replaced in in compliance with this code. Okay, thank you, Philip. Thank you. I'm going to ask any members of the audience who would like to speak. We're still in the public hearing section. Seeing no one approach the DS, public hearing is now closed. What is the wish of council? Move to adopt an ordinance rezoning the property within 250 feet of either side of the road center line of Lenore Street, Lenore Road, Avery Avenue, and Burtmont Avenue. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Who gets calling for the public here? Not me. That's right, but yeah, we I have. Do she has. Okay. To. Next on our agenda is a call for a public hearing to consider a contiguous annexation petition surrounded by Glenwood Hills LP for 3.49 acres located at 1300 Burtmont Avenue. Sally? We're finally going to let Philip take a rest yeah. for, for an item. So the management of Glenwood Hills have submitted this petition to voluntarily annex this property. Um, this is the uh, multi-unit family out in the old Walmart area on 64, and it is a sub, it's a division apartment or complex. an apartment complex, yeah. and you have part of the property that's in the city and the back part of the property that is not. Um, that is problematic for a variety of reasons, and they have finally decided that they would like to voluntarily annex and make all of that property in the city limits of Morganton. Um, what we are asking for you to do tonight, and it is currently served by utilities and, and, and all of that stuff, would ask if you want to move forward with this, that first of all, you adopt a resolution that would direct the clerk to certify the petition. Um, if you do that, I am able to certify the sufficiency of the petition tonight. And then upon those two actions, then you would actually call do adopt a resolution that would call for a public hearing that would occur at our June 3rd, 2019 regular city council meeting on this particular annexation. Uh, what's the wish of council? Motion to adopt a resolution directing the clerk to certify the sufficiency of the annexation petition received from Glenwood Hills LP. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Another motion, please. Well, if, before we go to the next motion. And, and I clerk. can do that. As I indicated, I can certify the sufficiency of the petition before you. Now we may proceed. Mm -hmm. So I have a second motion. 
Motion to adopt a resolution fixing June 3rd, 2019 at 6 p.m. in the City Hall Council Chamber as a public hearing date to consider this annexation petition. I have a motion to have a second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next on our agenda is a consideration of entering into a contract with the Western Piedmont Council of Governments to administer an Appalachian Regional Commission grant. Sally? Yes, you will recall that we have received a grant of $277,540, which is a 50-50 a grant. So that is the grant dollars. We are matching that dollar for dollar and putting in some extra dollars. You have awarded contracts for the water and sewer work in this area. We are still working on contracts for the electric portion of this work and also for the sidewalk portion. We'll be dealing with that later tonight. Um, we are asking that the Western Piedmont Council of Government help us in administering that grant. They are willing to do that for a contract amount not to exceed 12000 Motion to approve the contract with the Western Piedmont Council of Government to administer the Appalachian Region Commission grant for the amount of not to exceed $12,500. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Sally, do we need to do this one next? Yes, we do, please. Uh, next was a handout that you have, which is a consideration of a budget amendment for the Western Piedmont Council of Government Green Street Revitalization. Sally? And that is for this $12,000 and in, in the budget amendment appropriates general fund dollars to pay that expense. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next on our agenda is consideration of entering into agreement with the... Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nope. nope. Missed one. It's consideration of amendment to interlocal agreement for Burke Business Park. Mm -hmm. Sally. Um, back in 2005, the city of Morganton, Burke County, Valdez, Drexville, and, and Rutherford College um, executed an interlocal agreement, which has been the guiding document for the creation and operation of the property at Kathy Road known as the Burke Business Park. Um, little over eight, 80 acres at that site, um, you know that it has remained empty for, for these years. In looking at that as economic activity has picked up and as there have been some serious um, looks at the property, um, BDI, which now owns the property, has consulted and looked at the engineering for how those projects might get served found out that there is definitely a need for some upgraded infrastructure out there, in particular for an elevated water tank, for pumps and water lines that would go with that in order for any industry out there to be able to have adequate fire protection. Um, there is a effort afoot to get some state money to help with that. Along with that state money, there is a requirement that that grant be matched with local money. Uh, Burke County is stepping up and looking to provide any cash match necessary for that. The city of Morganton is stepping up in that partnership if you approve this agreement and looking to help with the engineering for that. The amendment to the agreement, which all the entities that participate have to approve, and that's why this is before you tonight, would say that any money that comes back, whether it's tax revenue, sale of land, anything that's generated from that property would then come back to the city and the county to reimburse us for those costs before any other distributions to the entire group as required by the interlocal agreement. What's the wish of council? Motion to approve and endorse amendment to that interlocal agreement of May 1st, 2005 to add new section providing for priority reimbursement to any local government contributing extra funds for additional infrastructure development. Second. I have a motion and a second. Sally, one question. So mm -hmm. um, we're getting ready to spend some money. and We think. We think. And when the property is sold or any money comes back in, we get our reimbursement first before the total distribution to all the agents. Correct. Agents. Both the city and the county would get it in a proportionate share of what we up front. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, and how much money would that be? 
What are we talking about as we, far as? We don't know yet because we're just in the process of, of trying to assess all of that and, and to try to get some, we've got preliminary engineering looking at that. That would come back to you at the time that we were going to spend that. Okay, do you think it's going to come uh, in the next budget year? This budget year? I think next it will be year? next budget year. What budget year? I think it will be next budget year in nine, fiscal year 1920, and that would be something that we would bring before you at that time that you would be able to approve or, or not approve. Okay. And I might say this amendment, like any amendment to that agreement, requires the unanimous approval of all the governments involved. Okay. Town of Drexel has already approved. Rutherford and College has. Rutherford College has approved. It's going before the county this month and before the town of Valdez this month. Any other questions from council? I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion, motion passes. <clears throat> Next on our agenda is consideration of award of a contract for the dem demolition of structures at 214 and 216 Jefferson Street. Yes, these are two properties located in the area where the downtown Greenway connector will be constructed. That is another project for which we have received federal funding um, to, to cause that design and that construction of the Greenway connector to happen, which again would connect from Green Street near this, across from the Senior Center all the way around by the uh, indoor pool, by the new Martin Luther King Jr. Park and the school and take us up to a crossing across from Catawba Meadows across Sanford Drive. Um, two funding sources for these vacant properties. Uh, 216 Jefferson Street is eligible for CDBG funding and so that would be paid for out of our CD, CDBG. There's that those letters again, um, demolition funding. 214 Jefferson Street would be paid for from nuisance abatement funds, and those are normal budgeted funds in the city budget. Um, we received bids, two proposals, and one no bid were received on Tuesday, April 23rd. Uh, D.H. Griffin of Hickory, North Carolina, supplied the lowest responsive, responsible bid. The Two amounts are $15,475 for 214 Jefferson Street and $14,910 for 216 Jefferson Street. 1920. 14,920. 14,910 is, oh. Yeah, there's a typo. It's 910, 910. actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the wish of council? Move to authorize uh, and contract with D.H. Griffin of Hickory, North Carolina for the demolition of structures at 214 and 216 Jefferson Street in the amount of $15,475 and $14,910, respectively. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? Sally, this will help us get along with our Greenway project and, and make the connection, correct? Correct. Necessary. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Consideration of award contract to Stimmel Associates PA for an appointment of the Center Square Parking Steer Park Steering Committee. Sally? Mm -hmm. So you'll also recall that in the current year's budget, we had dollars included to begin the process to look at the renovation of the historic courthouse square. Uh, the, the part really that, that goes from the courthouse building toward Meeting Street. And looking at that, um, in our master plan, actually in the 1997 master plan, as well as the one that we just adopted in March of 2018, um, both plans called for a redo of that square, making it more welcoming, more usable, not changing the historic nature of the courthouse that is very important or anything surrounding the courthouse, but looking at the green space, maintaining and preserving the green space, which is extremely important. Um, as a part of that, and needing to hire a landscape architecture firm and a design firm that could help with that process, you budgeted dollars in this year's budget. Um, we have issued a request for um, qualifications. We received nine, nine. Pro 
proposals. All of those nine proposals were reviewed by, by a group of, of staff members with representation from the city and the county and the Arts Council and Historic Burke. Did I leave out anybody? Um, and out of that, the top three were, were asked to come and do interviews. They were interviewed. The group has unanimous, unanimously recommended that we consider Stimmel Associates out of Winston-Salem. They've done some really creative and nice work. They gave a very nice presentation and had a lot of energy s surrounding the project. So this is a contract that would appropriate for a very public process. There will be three or four public meetings. Those will be advertised. We will be asking for input. They will get that input and then respond, much like happened in the master plan, although this will be centered not on all of downtown, but on this property. Um, the city has been working with the Arts Council on, on this plan and, and working with that group because it obviously affects their future and, and where they are in downtown and how that works. Um, I can tell you that the group felt like Stimmel and Stitch will take very seriously the public input will work to create opportunities to give back to the public what they think they've heard in the process. They have a which is a art grant that the Arts Council is currently administering that is a state um, Arts Council program, I believe. So that would work with this. It would allow for this project, the Arts Council to use that grant money to select an artist that would then work with the landscape architect and, and design group in the process to incorporate some form of public art in the process. Don't necessarily mean stationary art. It may be something that, that is very active and, and, and gets figured into the design of this. Just don't know where that's going yet. Um, in addition to that, we have applied for a $10,000 grant through Electricities that we hope to hear from in the next coming weeks that could help with this. The monies, the 130,000 are included in this year's budget. If we approve this, no budget amendments are required. And that's item one. Okay. What's the wish of council? Motion to approve a contract with Stemmel Associates, PA, to an oversee the development of the project entitled Center Square Park at a cost of $130,000. have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. We have another motion, Sally? Yeah, the second thing, so, so in order to, to fund this, we had $85,000 attached in the budget to this, which was basically a guess. We also had in the CIP budget for Main Street um, some money dedicated to the housing program, the housing loan program for downtown housing. Um, no one doing a housing project in downtown is taking advantage of that. So we're recommending that we move those dollars in into this program, which is how we can do this without a budget amendment, and would just ask that you agree with reallocating those funds within the CIP budget. What's the wish of council? Motion. I move to approve the allocation of CIP funds for the project. Do have a second? Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> Next motion, Sally, we need a steering committee. Yes, the final thing is, so, so any project that we have ever done or our master planning or any of that, we have appointed a steering committee. We get better results when we have a dedicated group that is working and coordinated through the process. What I didn't say was that the design process is probably about a 10-month process is what we're looking at. And so you have before you, and this was laid at your seat tonight, um, and it's on an email uh, from Sharon to Kelly that is dated today. And that is the latest suggested list. It is a large group, but this is a large project and it is a lot to consider. Um, would ask that you consider appointing these people. I believe that they have all agreed to serve. Some I'm happy to read them or you all can read them or if we think we need to read them. I'd like to read them. Go for it. 
Scott Coley, Deborah Jones, Nancy Van Oppen, Catherine Irvin, Jeff Stark, Tim Smith, Shane Prisby, Lance Riddle, Angela Shores, Julia, Julia Mode, Chris Jernigan, Bill Steiner, Tony Boba, Polly Ledbetter, Judy Willis, Paul Grafton, Christian Ramazzini, and staff would be Sally Sandy, Sharon Jablonski, Abby Gentry, Philip Luckadoo, Michael Burley, Moe Sklanderis, and Sanja Marston. And, and, you know, staff would come and go as, as required in the process, and that's helping to send out invitations, get notifications, get people engaged in the process. And again, there will be opportunities throughout this process that will be specific to the elected bodies that will ultimately take part in this. What's the wish of council? Mr. Mayor, I willingly uh, yield to Councilman <laughs> Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to appoint the Center Square Park Steering Committee. I have a motion to have a second. Second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Next is consideration of appointments to boards and commission. This is a mayoral appointment. Uh, Sally, will you give us some history on this? Mm -hmm. This is the Human Relations Commission. Uh, four terms are expiring. The three of our current members that are included in that group are Connie Davis, um, who I believe is representative for David Burleson from BUCM, Gail Jones, Tricia Evans Hunt. Those terms expire June 1st, 2019. All three of these individuals have indicated and expressed a desire to continue serving on the commission. Uh, Buddy Armour, who has been our school board representative um, and has been on the Mission quite some time has expressed that he has other commitments and cannot continue to serve at this time. While the bylaws for this group don't require a school board member take part, having a school board member on there for some time has been very valuable and important. The committee feels and the staff feels. Seth Hunt, who is a current school board member, has expressed his interest in being considered for this position. And then we have one other individual, and that is Dorian Palmer, who has also expressed an interest in becoming a member. This is the mayor appointment, and yeah. I appoint Connie Davis, Tricia Evans Hunt, Gail Jones, and Seth Hunt to, for terms to expire on May 3rd, 2020. 2022. 2022. Two. Thanks. Next is consideration of appointment uh, for the Fireman's Relief Fund Board. Mm -hmm. Sally. Um, the terms of David Ferber and Mark Bradshaw. Uh, David Ferber is a public safety appointee. Mark Bradshaw is a council appointee, have expired. These two have been serving. This board does not meet a lot, but when they need to meet, it is important. Um, would ask that those two be considered to be reappointed. And then Captain Campbell has retired and would suggest to you that um, Israel Gibson, the, the new fire captain, be appointed to replace Captain Campbell on this board. We have two motions. What's the wish of council? Motion to reappoint Mark Bradshaw and David Ferber to the Fireman's Relief Fund Board for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. I have, second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Motion passes. Have another motion, please. Motion, motion to appoint Israel Gibson to the Fireman's Relief Fund Board for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have uh, another item of business before we get to the 30-day notice. Uh, on, that was passed out. It's a consideration of rejection of bids for the Morganton Downtown Revitalization Project, North Green Street Sidewalk Improvements. Sally? Mm -hmm. This is the portion of the project that deals with the sidewalks and, and, and changes to, to curb and gutter along the area of the North Green Street project. Um, we took bids on this, and bids were considerably over budget. Um, we have a budget of just under $47,000, and we receive bids of 93802 quite a difference. Um, the staff worked with the lowest, the lowest bidder to see if we could negotiate that, and we could not. 
So we ask that you reject those and give us an opportunity to rebid. What's the wish of council? Motion to reject all bids and instruct staff to, to rebid the entire. For vacancies on boards and commissions, on board of adjustment, we have three terms expiring. On the cable commission, we have two terms expiring and one vacancy. On community appearance, we have three terms expiring, which are mayor appointments. Main Street Advisory, we have five terms expiring. Planning and zoning, uh, we have three terms expiring. And on Recreation Advisory, we have three terms expiring. If anyone has an interest in volunteering for any of these vacancies, uh, go to our website or see the our city clerk. It's easier to go to the website and make those, make those applications. Anything else on our agenda? We covered it all? Except for a closed okay. session. Uh, we need to have a closed session to have a motion. So moved. So moved. So a motion to go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-3184A-3 and 143-318.11A7 to con consult with the city attorney and hear some reports.